Hey guys, today I'll be taking a look at the latest polls that have just been released for the 2022 gubernatorial elections from the states of Nevada, Arizona, and Wisconsin. All three of these states are going to be three of the most competitive races of the year. In Nevada, Steve Sislak is running for his second term. In Arizona, we have a matchup between Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake. And finally, in Wisconsin, Tony Evers and Tim Michaels, who just won their nominations, will be going head to head in November with Tony Evers running for a second term. This is notorious difficult for a candidate who's of the same party as the party that controls the White House. We also have new polls from Ohio, Michigan, and Florida, and in this video, I'll be taking a look at what these new numbers suggest for their respective races. So starting off with the state of Nevada, Steve Sislak currently leads by 1.7% on average against Joe Lombardo. His lead has shrunk just a tiny bit after the release of this new Trafalgar poll, showing Joe Lombardo ahead by 3%. Now, of course, Trafalgar is infamous for overestimating Republicans, and if you look at the 2018 election, Steve Sislak won this race by 4% against Adam McSalt. The final Trafalgar poll had McSalt up by 2%. So as of right now, the polling average as a whole for Steve Sislak is okay. He could definitely be doing a lot better, but his polling numbers are not that terrible. If you look at the 2018 polls for the election between Sislak and Luxalt, you will see that Steve Sislak was not even the favorite to win that race. According to most polls in the final weeks leading up to the election, Adam Luxalt was actually expected to flip the state of Nevada. And so Steve Sislak was definitely one of the best candidates that Democrats had in that year, and he definitely outperformed expectations in November. And in 2022, Joe Lombardo is a pretty controversial candidate as well. I would say not as controversial as Luxalt, but Lombardo has had a lot of issues with him being pro-life in one of the most pro-choice states in the entire country. So as of right now, I'd say that Steve Sislak is in an electable position, but his election is definitely not guaranteed. According to the betting odds, we see a very, very close election. Currently, Democrats have a 51% chance at winning, 48 for the Republicans. The odds have dropped slightly for Sislak, mainly because of this new Trafalgar poll, I think the poll is not that bad for Democrats. I mean, 3% for Lombardo, according to Trafalgar, really is nothing. According to the 530 forecast, Democrats have a 61% chance at holding on to this governorship. And if you look at the odds here, Steve Sislak's odds have only gone up over the last two months, and currently he's projected to win by a margin of 2%, but I still have Nevada as a tilt Democratic state. I think the election is going to be one of the closest that we have, but as of right now, I would say that Sislak has a very slight advantage. His incumbency is one of the biggest reasons most incumbent governors do win their re-elections. If you look back at 2014, we saw the re-election of Brian Sandoval by a very large margin against Bob Goodman, but of course 2014 was also a very good year for Republicans as a whole. And 2010, Sandoval was re-elected by a pretty strong margin as well to his first term. And of course in 2006, Jim Gibbons was re-elected. And moving on to Florida, Ron DeSantis leads by 7 and 8 percent, according to the two most recent polls conducted by the Florida Chamber of Commerce against Nikki Freed and Charlie Chris. In the end, though, Charlie Chris is going to be the Democratic nominee in this race for a second time. Looking at the other polls, I mean, you see clearly here that Ron DeSantis is on track to win his re-election. However, in 2018, his election was the closest one of the year against Andrew Gillum. Ron DeSantis won by a margin of just 0.39 percent. This is very different election to the one that we have right now. In 2018, of course, Ron DeSantis faced a very tough challenge from Andrew Gillum, and Gillum was actually favored to win this race, so it was a surprise that DeSantis even came out on top of this victory as base propelled him to huge popularity within the Republican Party. In 2014, we saw the election of Rick Scott to a second term. Charlie Crist was the Democratic nominee, so Crist has come back to run once again. But Charlie Crist, not as a Republican, has not been able to win any major statewide races in the Sunshine State. In 2006, this was Crist's only major statewide election. He defeated Jim Davis to win the governorship of the state for four years, and towards the end, he was essentially kicked out by the Republican Party for being too friendly with Barack Obama. And so 2010, he ran for Senate instead of governor, and he was basically pummeled by Mark Rubio. It was a three-way race, so at that point in time, Charlie Crist was an independent and basically split the vote with the Democrats, and in 2014, he ran against Rick Scott, and this was actually a pretty good race for Democrats considering just how terrible 2014 was. If you look at the 2014 map, I mean, so many flips for the Republican Party, and the GOP at the very end of this held 31 governorships with one independent being Bill Walker in Alaska, and so if you look 
look at the 2014 election, a 1% margin for Rick Scott was pretty bad considering just how much the year favored Republicans, but Florida was a more liberal state at the time, but Charlie Crist, of course, has come back in 2022 after winning a few House elections over the last couple of years, but in the end, Charlie Crist is not going to defeat Ron DeSantis, realistically speaking. 538 has a state as a very likely state for the Republicans, looking at the odds here for both Charlie Crist and Ron DeSantis. Crist is at 8, and DeSantis is at 92, and currently Ron DeSantis is projected to win by a 10% margin. If you look at the betting markets here, 91% Ron DeSantis re-elected, 2% for Charlie Crist. So of course, Florida is going to be a likely state on our map. Next up, in Michigan, on average, Gretchen Whitmer leads by 13.2% against Tudor Dixon, according to the polling average here. If you look at the most recent two polls, Whitmer is up by 12 and 5%. Obviously, Gretchen Whitmer is going to win her re-election. It's not even going to be close. Tudor Dixon only won her nomination because James Craig was disqualified due to not having enough valid signatures to appear on the ballot. If Craig was the Republican nominee, this race would be much, much closer. Gretchen Whitmer would be in a fight for her second term. However, at this point, she's basically going to cruise to re-election. Tudor Dixon is not well known in Michigan at all. She simply only won because James Craig was disqualified. If you look at the betting markets here, we see a clear victory for Gretchen Wimmer. She has an 80% chance at winning. She may even do better than she did in 2018. And of course, her victory in 2018 was pretty solid. She won by 9.6% just two years after Donald Trump won the state of Michigan in the 2016 presidential election. We also saw big wins in the upper Midwest with Democrats across the board. Pennsylvania Tom Wolf re-elected by 17%. Wisconsin a flip for Tony Evers defeating incoming Governor Scott Walker and of course in Minnesota Tim Walz defeating Jeff Johnson by 11.4%. So Michigan is not going to be the race that it was in the last couple of presidential elections. It's been very close in 2020, very close in 2016, relatively close in 2012, but in 2022 Michigan is very confidently going to go to the Democratic Party. According to the 530 forecast, Michigan was actually a solid Democratic state for quite a while. Whitmer had an over 95% chance at winning for a couple of weeks, but her odds have now dropped to 93. She is expected to win by a margin of 10%, and according to 538, Whitmer is clearly favored to win Michigan's election for governor. So right now, I have Michigan as a likely Democratic state. I don't think that should be surprising at all, but I do think that Gretchen Whitmer will do better than both Tim Walls in Minnesota and even Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania. Michigan is simply more Democratic of a state than these other two, I would say, with the exception of Minnesota, but on the gubernatorial level as of right now, Gretchen Wimmer is doing much better compared to Shapiro in Pennsylvania, and of course, Walls in Minnesota. Tim Walls may actually be in a more competitive race than we thought, and on this map, I do have the lean Democratic states filled in, because honestly, even though the races in New Mexico, Oregon, Maine, Minnesota, and even Pennsylvania, they may be close, but in the very end, they are going to go to Democrats. And next up, in Arizona, Katie Hobbs leads by 3.3% against Carrie Lake. We do have a pretty close election here. Hobbs has been doing very well in the polls. The most recent poll was sponsored by Fox News, and it does have Hobbs up by 3%. Now, the thing you do have to know about polls in Arizona is that they are not the worst. They are much better than polls in Pennsylvania or North Carolina, but they have been known to overestimate Democrats. Kirsten Cinema was overestimated in 2018, as well as both Joe Biden and Mark Kelly in 2020, not by the biggest of margins, but by around 2 to 3 percent, Democrats are known to be underperformers in Arizona, at least compared to the polling numbers. And so a three-point lead for Katie Hobbs is significant, but we do have to understand that Kerry Lake is still very much in this race, despite her really not being that great of a candidate. Honestly, Republicans should be doing much better in this election. I think that Kerry Lake should at least be leading in the polls if we had a generic Democrat and a generic Republican go up against each other for the Arizona governorship. So Doug Ducey was pretty easily elected in 2018. However, there has been a rift between him and Donald Trump. And so when it came up to the 2022 Republican primary, Ducey decided to endorse Lake's challenger. Of course, Kerry Lake was very early on endorsed by Donald Trump. And so with the backing of both Mike Pence as well as Doug Ducey, Karen Taylor Robeson came within 5% of defeating Kerry Lake. This was a surprisingly close primary election. Kerry Lake was expected to carry the primary by over 10%. But Robeson did surprisingly well, and this just highlights another weakness for Kerry Lake. She did not even win half of the votes from her own primary. On the Democratic side, Katie Hobbs won by a much larger margin, winning 72% of the vote against Marco Lopez, as well as Aaron Lieberman. So on the Democratic side, it was a clear victory for Katie Hobbs. But on the Republican side, 
Kerry Lake did not even win a majority of votes. And so as of right now, I think that Kerry Lake, even though she is a flawed candidate, she is still very much in this race. I only have Arizona as a tilt Democratic state. It would still be a major win for the party, as of course the Republicans currently hold this governorship. And according to the betting markets, Democrats do have a very slight advantage with Katie Hobbs having a 52% chance at winning 50 for the Republicans. And of course, if you look at the odds here, basically at the very beginning of August, when Kerry Lake won the Republican primary, the odds shot straight down for their own party, and they have since not gone up. According to the 530 forecast, we do have Katie Hobbs favored with her having a 54% chance of winning. So still a very, very close election, but election that Democrats do have a pretty tangible edge in as of right now. And now before we look at the final Florida poll, I do want to take a look at the poll that was released in Ohio showing Mike DeWine up by just 1% against Nan Whaley. If we do look at the Ohio polls here, you will see that a poll conducted at the very beginning of this month showed Mike DeWine leading with just 44% to Whaley's 43%. This poll was of course funded by the Ohio Democratic Party. It has a very heavy skew towards the left and if you look at the two other polls that were released in the last couple of months, DeWine has led by 16%. And right now, I do expect Mike DeWine to win by a solid margin. I just wanted to mention this poll. It's going to be a big outlier, and it's going to be very, very inaccurate. And finally, in Wisconsin, Tony Evers leads by 3% against Tim Michaels in the most recent poll conducted by Fox News. Michaels is the Republican nominee. He just recently won the nomination against Rebecca Cleefish. Cleefish is the former lieutenant governor, so it was a pretty surprising win for Michaels. But Tim Michaels did receive the endorsement of Donald Trump very late in the race. Tony Evers is, of course, running for a second term. He is a relatively popular governor, but he will face a very strong challenge from the Republicans in his second election. If you look at the 2018 race, Tony Evers barely defeated Scott Walker, who was running for re-election, and of course 2018 was a huge year for Democrats overall. If we look at the 2014, 2012, and 2010 races, Scott Walker won all of them pretty easily in a state as blue as Wisconsin, of course, until just the last couple of years. Wisconsin was a pretty Democratic state overall. It voted for Democrats in every single election straight for 28 years. And so looking at the most recent numbers between Michaels and Evers, we are seeing that Wisconsin is becoming more and more of a purple state as we speak. And of course, the 3% margin for Tony Evers is nothing. I think Tim Michaels is still very much in this race. As we saw in Arizona, polls almost always overestimate Democrats. They overestimated Joe Biden heavily in the 2020 presidential election. But of course, polls with Trump are known for being famously inaccurate. If you look at the governor polls from 2018, they were really not not that bad. Scott Walker led in many of the final polls. We also saw many polls showing Evers ahead. And of course, a one point margin for Tony Evers was not surprising at all, even though Scott Walker was actually the favorite candidate. He was running for his third term. And most governors who run for a third term do win if they run consecutively. That was exactly what Scott Walker is doing. There are no term limits in the state of Wisconsin. But Tony Evers came out on top. It was a big win for Democrats. However, the polls really were not that inaccurate. So we're just going to see whether or not polls are going to be right once again. Again, Tony Evers right now is still in a relatively good position going into his re-election. According to 538, he has a 66% chance at winning. If you look at this forecast based on the polls alone, he has a 49% chance at winning. So Tony Evers' numbers in the polls really are not that great. And his odds have gone down significantly after these two most recent polls were released. At one point in time, Tony Evers had an 80% chance at winning this election. And currently, he is expected to win by a margin of just 3%, which would still actually be better than his margin in 2018. So as of right now, I have Wisconsin as a tilt Republican state. I do think Tim Michaels is doing well enough in the polls right now to win, but we're really just going to have to see what happens. What matters right now is that Tony Evers is still in good contention, and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens in October because that is the most important month for these elections. It's really not until October that we have a very, very good picture as to who is going to win each of these individual races. And so this is not really a prediction or anything. This is just my analysis of the most recent polls that we've seen from the 2022 gubernatorial elections. Looking at the map here, I mean, it's going to be very, very close between both parties. We also have a very competitive race in Kansas between Laura Kelly and Derek Schmidt as Kelly is running for her re-election as the Democratic governor in Kansas. So very exciting races over the next couple of months to cover. And of course, we'll keep you guys very updated here on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down below. Comment down below who you think will win 
nine more governorships after 2022 and which races you are closely watching. Of course, with Democrats now up in the generic ballot at 0.5%, they are doing better than ever. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Consider purchasing a channel membership for just 99 cents per month for extra perks on this channel as we enter the midterm months. And I'll see you guys in the next video.